Hey, uh, this is Ben Osvito, brand manager for Nighthawk Pro Gaming here at Netgear, and we are in our Twitch uh, uh, like monthly stream uh, number two. <laughs> and uh, I'm just gonna go across the the couch. We're gonna introduce ourselves, and uh, we've got a couple of cool things to talk about. Uh, we've got a little bit of gameplay, uh, and uh, let's just take it away. Great. I'm Brett Tassell. I'm brand manager for SMB for Netgear. And also resident VR nerd. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm Chris. I'm the uh, the developer uh, for Unwieldy Systems. Um, I'm making a little indie VR project called Light Strike Ray, which I'll uh, I'm told I'll be get be getting into later. So yeah, I'm excited. The, we'll be taking a look at that, uh, Brett <laughs> uh, and Chris are gonna uh, uh, kind of give us a deep dive into it, and we'll take a look. Uh, we'll, hopefully, we'll be able to stream some of that out for you guys. Yeah, and I'm Drew. I'm director of uh, events and marketing for the SF Shock, the local Overwatch team for the Bay Area. Woo! Woo! <laughs> so uh, let's uh, let's let's see what what do we want to talk about first. Let's talk about um, the Shock uh, Overwatch. Uh, the season uh, just ended. The Shock, you know, didn't make it into the playoffs. But what what's going on with with the with the team now? Yes, yeah, so we got a long off season. A lot of players went back, you know, home to visit family. But they're still going to be coming back for World Cup. I mean, Team USA has a lot of people from the Shock. It's kind of like Team Shock. And then we have uh, <laughs> you know IDDQ and, and Nevix are on Sweden, and then Dak is on Spain. So a lot of the players are coming back for, for World Cup, and I think Sleep is an All Star game. Uh, then we have a couple events planned for the off season. I mean, there's a lot of time until Overwatch season two. Um, so I think we have a finals watch party at Esports Arena in Oakland. That's next Saturday. It's so RSVP online and links are on socials. First 300 people get a giant epic shock swag bag. And then uh, it's going to be just a giant watch party there. Hoping to have a lot of people pack it up with some shock themed drinks and food. Mm -hmm. uh, then after that, there's going to be a Caltopia every year. UC Berkeley has an event uh, to you know uh, celebrate the college, uh, future students, past students, uh, current students. And you know the shock can be there since we partnered with Cal Berkeley, so we're inviting all of our fans to come out. We're gonna be flying up players, you can hang out with them as well, have the play areas, and be fun activations. So we got a lot of plans, and there's a few more things we can't talk about just yet. Yeah. Um, oh, another yeah. big one that you guys are involved in, by the way. Is... Well, well, we'll we'll talk about that in, in in just a minute. But there's the 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 cool thing is is uh you know when is when is the World Cup start? That's that's yeah, early. it's during BlizzCon, so I believe that's gonna be uh, November second. Serves. Yeah, and do they do they actually come back and then train as a as a World Cup team for a little while before they go to, or is it more of an ad? -hoc? I think every player has a very uh, different schedule. Yeah, so that's definitely not my department. Okay, but, okay, yeah. Um, so th so uh, let's talk about uh, you know at, we are you know a sponsor uh, of the Shock and NRG, um, and then you guys are doing something really cool uh, locally here. So let's talk about. Um, after hours gaming league. <laughs> you guys are smiling because you're in it. You think you're gonna win? <laughs> well, there's only two teams right now that's that's signed up. Um, it's us and and unfortunately, it's also the shock. Not to say that like the staff, that, the that we're gonna beat the shock. I can't I, like not at all. Uh, can 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 say like we saw it and we were like, oh crap, you know. But uh, but it's the it's it's not. The shock. It's it's the corporate. Yeah, it's the coaching staff, and yeah. not, not everyone's top five hundred. I think only one person is, so it's, it's not that bad. But there's a lot of really other good teams. So the company is called uh, After Hours Gaming League. They've been around for a couple of years. It has roots back to Day Nine TV, which is pre Justin mm -hmm. TV, pre Twitch. So that's uh, a lot of legacy back there. Um, and uh, it's majority Bay Area companies, which is why we can't do the partnership with them and kicked it off for, for Fall Overwatch this year. But last year they had about 80, 80 local companies all competing. Right. Amazon, Google had 13 teams, I think it was. So Google always kind of Dang. takes us away. So yeah, that's a lot get of, ready for all the Google departments to bring it to you. That's a, that's a lot of, of Google teams. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, our team is, is solid bronze right across the board. So we think hey, I'm we in got, silver. Oh. <laughs> so we think we have a good shot. Um, it's about teamwork, though. It's okay. Individual <laughs> we're, we're in a building... We're in a building phase this year, I think. <laughs> no, um, it, it's it's just, it's exciting. It's uh eight uh eight weeks of play. I think there's what three or four weeks of preseason. Mm -hmm. uh, registration goes until August fourteenth. We we'll, we will actually be streaming uh, our games uh, here on on our Twitch channel. Uh, it's it should be interesting because uh, uh, 
I, I'm, I'm skeptical on how we're going to do, but, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was it, it's awesome thing to be part of. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's awesome about like how you, uh, you guys are kind of keeping, uh, you know, here in the Bay Area, just kind of keeping that drive going, keeping awareness and, and, and keeping everything, you know, moving. And, and it's for charity as well. Yeah, yeah, it's Extra Life. Uh, so it benefits the Children's Miracle Network Hospital in SF and Oakland. So very Great. nice. And there's going to be a live final event to the sports arena in the summer, so that'll be exciting. We'll find a way to salute from the players, maybe have them join the teams. Can't say too much yet, but <laughs> yeah, there's a lot we can do in this space. We're, so we, uh, we're looking for a ringer. So, <laughs> if anybody out there, um, Angelo, is uh, what's uh, anybody saying anything, or you know, give us or your comments or, or questions that you have for any of us up here, um, and uh, just for it, those of you joining us, uh, once again, this is our, our uh, live from the Nighthawk Pro Gaming Lounge here at Netgear. I'm Ben Osvito, the brand experience manager for Nighthawk Pro Gaming. Uh, we'll just go across the, 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 the couch once again, introduce ourselves. So for those of you joining us a little bit late, you can kind of figure out what's going on. Yeah, I'm Brett. I'm the brand experience manager for SMD products and resident VR nerd. <laughs> I'm Chris. Uh, I'm working uh, for my little indie, stu indie studio, uh, Unwieldy Systems, on a competitive VR game called Light Striker Right. Yeah, and I'm Drew. I'm in charge of events and marketing for SM Shock. So uh, with that, let's kind of go into a couple other things. We uh, uh, let's let's talk about like the big thing in Overwatch uh, in the last week or so. Not just the the quarterfinals and the semifinals that are going on, but the the big uh, story that like sucked up almost all the air last week <laughs> was uh, the announcement with uh, ABC and Disney and ESPN with airing uh, multi multiple years with uh, Overwatch. Um, from your guys' perspective, how does how do you how do you guys feel about that as far as like I mean hats off to Overwatch League, it's a huge deal and it's really exciting. And for me being on the event side of things, it makes my life a whole lot easier because now we can bypass the conversation of, oh, do you have internet? How's the internet work? And we can just talk about <laughs> ESPN Disney pulled up on the TV. Now I, I I've heard a rumor that one of the events you literally streamed from a mobile phone. Is that true? <laughs> Yes, we had a big watch party in SF. Uh, we tested the internet, everything kind of checked out, but the day of it didn't exactly work as uh, it did the day before. Um, so we had a couple of pauses during you know the watch party of like 500 plus people, so it was pretty stressful. And I was in the back corner with a bunch of people from IGN. They're trying to call me down, like, it's okay, don't worry. And in the end, we actually took a, a phone and we tethered it to the laptop and streamed the whole watch party from a phone. Which with someone because one person had unlimited data in our little circle, thank God, or else it wouldn't like wow. Film. I can just imagine with aluminum foil trying oh, to like yeah. it, <laughs> it, it, was, it was scary. It was so <laughs> stressful. <laughs> that's that's crazy. This whole this whole deal is going to allow for like events and, and watch parties where you know places where they didn't have a computer to kind of stream Twitch, where you can now you know just pop ESPN on. Everybody sort of has yeah. that. Um, I, I think you have to get the upgraded. Cable package to get Disney XD because uh, it doesn't seem to be in the in the lower one, but um, but you know ABC. I, I think they're doing the, like the finals or, and stuff like that on ABC. So that should be pretty interesting to see how that that develops. It's 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 been interesting for, from our um, connection with with uh, the Overwatch League, just watching it grow from its very beginnings, you know, in January to where it is now, and how it seems like every about month or so, it just sort of reaches just a little bit further out in the circle uh, my mom even knows of the overwatch league which is pretty amazing uh and then um let's uh let, let's let's talk about what else we what we got going today angelo what else we got VR demo. we got a vr demo we've got uh spicy the spicy wing, wing challenge so <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a, uh, we got to give a shout out to, uh, to Sean from, uh, was it now we feast? Um, uh, uh, and, uh, for the, 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 the spicy wing sort of, uh, I guess genre, but we're going <laughs> to kind of, uh, go into that. We're going to have a little bit of a contest as uh, some of us here, uh, are going to, uh, I think we're doing a overwatch death match. Uh, and then what is for, yeah, then what happens to the, the loser of this? They have to eat three of the spiciest, three of the spiciest, spiciest? wings. Spiciest? 
I thought we were getting the mid-level spicy. <laughs> <laughs> that was just to get you signed on. <laughs> but I think it's uh, I, I think it's gonna be fairly spicy. Uh, we got Josh back back there. I think he's already training for this, so so we'll see. <laughs> he doesn't want to um, eat a wing. <laughs> but we have that. We also have a giveaway of uh, some uh, keys for like uh, strike array, and um, it, we also have a uh, Nighthawk uh, swag backpack. That's going to say that fast, uh, which is going to have uh, a water bottle, uh, a mug, and and a Nighthawk Pro Gaming hat. So uh, how are we giving that away, Angelo, through Gleam? And the VR demo. Um, are we putting that link underneath? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the link will be underneath. Uh, look for that. Um, and that giveaway we're going to do today. Um, and let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about your game. Sure. So you, you want to give, for people out there that, that don't know about it, sure. let's just talk a little bit uh, about Light Strike Array. Yes, yeah. So Light Strike Array is a little project I've been working on for a couple of years. Uh, it's sort of just like a part-time thing. It's starting to get bigger and bigger. Um, it's a multifaceted VR tactics brawler. Um, I made up one of those words in there. Um, <laughs> brawler? I, uh, <laughs> so I call it a tactics brawler uh, because it's sort of... It, it's a bit hard to frame, but it's a bit of a fusion of the sort of tactics genre of games where you've got sort of like this grid with, you know... Um, units not, but it's not really a tactics game because you're not actually controlling an army. Um, the brawler half of it is meant to uh, talk about like indie brawler, platform brawler, some sort of fighting. And what it really boils down to is it's basically a VR, it's a competitive VR game powered by what I like to call martial arts physicality. Okay. Um, so... And you can tell when you see someone do the demo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys can just right. And so, so you did a demo of this at Fanime yes. recently. Yes. So yeah. how did that go? And, and, and That went great. Um, so I got, I got some of my friends together to help me uh, put together the setup. But we basically were uh, actually set up right next to the SF Shock by like pure nice. coincidence. Um, <laughs> and what we did was we basically squared off play space for 10 minute 1v1 demos uh, of our uh, deathmatch mode, which is a relatively, it's the, the simplest of the modes we've got mm -hmm. set up in the game. Um, the uh, sort of, we, it's meant to be a very competitive game. So I like, we went all out. We divided the spaces with a blackout curtain, gave them like their own, you know, pairs of five sensors. Okay. Um, gave, them the, gave them the rundown. Um, and one of the clients actually had, uh, was fully decked out in green screen. Uh, which <laughs> allowed cool. us to do a live uh, mixed reality um, showcase of the game. So, so, so you actually put them into the game? Yes. Using the green screen? Yeah, and so what that means is that like the people walking... Was, this was in the Fanime Gaming Hall. Um, I, I had previously done a demo at G5, and uh, Gio, the guy that uh, managed the hall, was like, hey, do you want to come to Fanime? And I was like, yeah, sure, it sounds like fun. Um, so sort of like the right audience. Uh, basically, you put this TV up, um, and we have, we use this compositing software called live, um, that, uh, I'm sure a lot of the VR community knows all about them. Uh, they're the guys that, uh, did the, the, the software and, uh, one of their employees was the, the Beat Saber girl that was playing the, the VR rhythm game. Uh, okay. She was composited into the game. I, I saw that at, uh, IEM in Sydney. They had that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Demo. It's a, it's a really great game. Really absolutely fun. Um, gets a lot of the fundamentals of VR game design, right? In my opinion. Um, but the, the, the live uh, tech and do other stuff as well. It's basically what you do is you get the green screen and you composite video game foreground uh, player removing the background of the green screen and then video game background. So that lets you do things like you, you pull out a sword and if you put it in front of your body, it'll be in front. But if you move it behind, it'll, it'll magically like appear behind your body. And it's okay. extremely um, cool tech, but more importantly, um, it allows passers-by that were you know, just wandering the hall they saw these, you know, these people in this like Tron style it's world like, with a yeah. so, with a Except sword. I was on the other side, so right. I didn't have the the augmented reality. It means everyone was cheering for the person killing me. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, 
Yeah, so, we had, that's a real person too. We had the, we, a lot of people didn't notice because it was kind of an awkward setup. We were kind of like rotated yeah. 90 degrees from what I what, you know, would have liked. But you know, I was like, uh, I'm, I'm happy the whole thing got together at all. Uh, it, but people it, has a cool, it has a cool like game grid from Tron sort of feel. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just watching like the trailers and, and stuff. So I'm super excited to see how it is. Yeah. Um, with with that being an independent developer, like it's, how big is, is the team that's working on, on it, it? And and what are the challenges, you know, being an independent developer here in, in Silicon Valley? Sure. That's a great question. Um, well, I, I can speak. I will say rent uh, is definitely <laughs> the, core, the core challenge for any independent game developer in Silicon Valley. Um the, uh, I, I mean, I still have a day job as well um, mm -hmm. to sort of, you know, pay enough of the bills that I can sort of work on this. And I'm very grateful to them that uh, for uh, giving me that space. Um, the, uh, what was the first part of that question? Oh, uh, uh, like, uh, how, big is your, how, how oh, big is your team oh, that's so working So the, the core development team is literally just me. Wow. Um, I've been working on it sort of, I, I like to say quarter time, because it was like, it was like kind of like a, a, a small part of my nights and weekends. And then about a year ago, I went into what is effectively formally part time okay. um, working on it, sort of working on it during the, the afternoon. Um, and I've had a lot of help from my friends on little bits and pieces. Uh, my girlfriend, Andrea, big cosplayer and artist and uh, she's put together a bunch of the, like two dimensional assets for like infographics, and okay. she she edited the trailer as well. Um, my friend Jay did the music for the trailer, um, and I've had you know all all of my friends shout out to the Taj, um, they know who they are, um, <laughs> for helping me with the the setup, uh, coordinating people, getting them in and out, showing them the ropes uh, while I get it all together. But sort of core development has largely uh, been me. That and and that's a that's a hard thing, like. You know, I, I, I've done white label and small um, shops um, in my past life. I was in, you know, uh, development. And it, it's, a, it's a difficult thing where you've got like, you know, two or three people and you're really just kind of really passion project. The, the cool thing about this is in the VR space, there's a lot of like chat roomy kind of stuff and, and moving <laughs> around stuff. But and, 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 and fighting against sort of player versus environment. But this is like... You know, this is, I think, one of the first, like, player versus player sort of stuff, which makes it, you know, very co competitive, as you were saying. Um, you know, uh, is it was that, like, a, a deliberate design? Is that sure, sure. space? That that so, there's, so there's plenty of player versus player stuff in VR, I will say. Um, but I kind of see what you're getting at. Um, a, lo a lot of people know VR, especially for, like, the, um, the VR chat stuff and uh, that sort of thing. Um, the... It's, it's really interesting... Um, I think at a high level, when and this this is still very much true when we when we first set out with VR, a lot of uh, developers were immediately thinking, uh, okay, I want to make all these desktop games that I loved in my childhood in VR. That was the first yeah. thing that we went to, right? Um, and we uh, that's it's 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 pretty cool seeing some of those things come out, and even the big AAA studios, you know, like like Bethesda has been like Sorry. aggressively porting all of their stuff yep. to VR, which is pretty cool. Um, but, uh, me personally, um, I like exploring some of the stuff that you could sort of only experience in VR. I, and I, I, think, I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. So the, I think my, my approach to that has been to focus, I, I don't know if I'm straying too far from your original no, question. No, no, no. Um, is... but <clears throat> my focus has been to think less about the headset and more about the controllers. Um, mm -hmm. the way I like to look at VR, uh, is to think now that we have, you know, like, especially the Steam VR track, it's, pretty, it's, it's amazing. It's extremely clever. Um, what we can effectively do is we can turn back the clock 11 years and revisit all of the things that fell flat on their face when we tried to develop for the Wii when it first launched. We yeah. thought we were okay. going to get this amazing motion control revolution, and then we found out that like you can play Wii Tennis, like waggling <laughs> this thing from your wrist with zero energy required. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a strap, though. Right? Yeah, it, 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 well, the key to that whole design was the strap, right? You know, because it kept it flying. <laughs> but that was, that's, that, like, that innovation, yeah, it was... It was incredible. I mean, like, it, and v, I, I, I will, I will assert that VR will not be here today without the Wii. Right. Um, it's, it might not seem intuitive, but um, it's certainly an extremely core component. Um, the the 3D and the graphics stuff has sort of all been on its own separate track. Yeah. But um, yeah. I have a lot of respect for Nintendo for like they know how to play with systems of play. Mm -hmm. um, so like things like Wario, where smooth moves and stuff like that, uh, where they they just like they're just like figuring out new ways that, you know, kids and adults can, like, 
manipulate the environment and get themselves like engaged in the game. And it's extre- it's it's absolutely critical in VR to sort of make u- full use of those motion controls as much as you can. I have a question. Yeah. Um, since you were showing it at Fanime, like, I think that not that many people know about VR yet, really know about it. Maybe they put a phone in a cardboard box and looked, <laughs> but they haven't used VR like what you've made. Um, I've used a lot of it. Sure. and. I feel like that space is still has a huge amount of headroom. Oh, yeah. And I'm just curious, like, when you were showing it off, what would you say the percentage of people that had used VR versus the people that, you know, were coming and trying it? I would say maybe 10, 15% had touched VR in some capacity. Uh-huh. Um, most, most maybe, maybe like 10 to 20%. Um, yeah. I would say most, most people had never done VR. Um, I would say a good chunk of the... Maybe maybe like thirty percent had used like really light VR. Yeah. Maybe maybe less than that. I, I can't mm-hmm. quite remember. Um, but it was very it was def- it was definitely a very small number that had like that were like comfortable with uh, you know the vibe and like yeah. for for example like um, one of the, the biggest challenges um, when demoing is teaching people about this this weird the little side button the, the, the grip button. Yeah. Um, which not a lot of people, even people who like own the Vive, don't understand how to use it. And like, I think the way Valve intended it was that you you found a grip on it and you just kind of like squeezed it with your knuckles. Um, yeah. But it's a uh, it's a little it's a it's a little bit uh, unusual. But uh, once you sort of understand uh, sort of where they were going with it, it kind of makes sense that it's designed like this. And I know they're they're working on new controllers and yeah, stuff, which sure. are really exciting. Totally. But, um, yeah. So there's actually a, there was a key reason uh, I. I decided on Fanime. Um, there was another extremely large VR event right next to Fanime. Oh. Um, you may or may not have heard of it. It's called Maker Fair. Yep. Uh, it's, oh, yeah. not, it's not actually a VR event. No, VR was a huge part of it. A lot of it, it yeah. Um, but um, I'm actually, I'm fairly, I'm fairly uh, like, I don't know if you're familiar with the um, Silicon Valley virtual reality, SVR. So actually, we're going to know you and yeah. I. Oh, you guys are going to have a I've been like, uh, <laughs> I've been like maybe two or three times in like two, two or three years ago. Okay. So I haven't gone in a long time. Oh, cool. uh, uh, you know, I've talked to the people there before. I used to watch the original streams of, you know, the original DK1 headset. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know, just, I, I was really in it from the beginning. In fact, uh, I have, you know, DK1 over here, or DK2, and, you know, I have CV1. I have basically all the Oculus headsets that have been out. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I'm, I'm well versed, so yeah. Cool. Um, I'm really excited to go so, in again tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, uh, we'll see how much energy I have at the end of the day. If, if, I, if I recover from the hot wings, uh, I'll, prob- I'll probably end up dropping by. Uh, but I've been going there for a, a while now, and I sort of one of the maybe the biggest surprises to me getting into VR um, was realizing that like there's actually kind of a there's a there's a bigger gap than you might expect between the communities of you know people that are you know deep into competitive gaming and gaming yeah. in general. And people that are VR enthusiasts. Yes. Um, surprising, you know, it's uh, there's all this amazing non-gaming stuff that's happening in VR. There's an amazing. Um, that, yeah. But a lot of a lot of the a lot of the people um, that sort of show up at these things, uh, they're uh, they're almost almost unilaterally like retro gamers. Okay. And they're like, oh yeah, huh. like I'm a, I'm a huge gamer. No wonder. <laughs> so some of them are aware. Some of them are, are aware of this. So they're so they're more of of like first generation sort of gamers. Yes. Where you know arcades, quarters, that sort of. Thing. There's that, and then there's there's a lot of like, oh yeah, I played a lot of Doom and I played a lot of Command okay. and Conquer, um, and it's like, yeah. it, it's cool, um, but like <laughs> I could mention like Splatoon and people would be like, what? Oh, what is that? <laughs> so I think, so yeah. here's, a, here's a question, and I'll put it to the to, to the whole. So, do you, where do you see like the intersection between sort of uh, VR development, VR games, and, and esports? <laughs> oh, that's that's a that's a great question. I, I think it's that's a five hour question. Yeah, yeah it, it is. There's a whole symposium. I think this. there is a massive amount of untapped uh, potential in game design for VR esports, um, and I think, like I mentioned earlier, the mixed reality stuff. I think that stuff is going to be like absolutely critical to making yeah. sure that um, yeah. spectators can understand it. Um, unlike with, I guess, traditional esports, like um, you don't you you care a little bit, but not like critically about the player behind the keyboard and mouse. Like player cam is really cool, and it's awesome, like seeing you know the facial expressions and stuff yeah. like that. Um, but like you're more sort of you you get a read on what the mechanical skill is by watching the gameplay mm-hmm. purely with VR, and especially if your VR design gets really physical. 
you need to be able to see, you you want to be able to see the actual player moving their body yeah. to see like oh this is how they're doing that this is how you know like this is how they're getting that streak and there's you know there's some room for creative expression um, yeah, in being able to see the player's body and so but like streams where you like just point a camera at a dude standing in a room with a thing over his face um like it's kind of neat um but it's doesn't quite convey the same thing so right. it, it, it it's not uh god i just watched like pacific rim 2 like, yeah <laughs> uh, bec- uh, like yeah it, it, it doesn't like that no it's just, it's just some dork and like, <laughs> like myself like going which way where where am i going like i i, I played the was it the arrow game and man uh, on like, steam it, VR. yeah steam vr yeah and, and uh, you let can the lab translate your archery skills across titles oh, yeah <laughs> yeah and, and like five of those it, yeah. I, it just it it the weird thing is, is that there's that moment when you're playing where you sort of forget that you're sort of playing yeah. a game, and then it starts. You, you start having the natural, you know, the biomechanics that start yeah. taking over, yeah. and, and and you're a lot more successful. So I think it's going to be kind of interesting as uh, you know, esports and, and and VR sort of you know sort of collide. I think that, like at the end of the day, there's a couple different buckets of gamers i mean some just want to grind out like an rpg some do not want online multiplayer others yeah. just want to pk like runescape everything comes back to runescape at the end <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah but and, and even looking in runescape you have the skillers and the player you know player versus monsters and then the player killers the pk yeah so like whenever i play again like i'm hyper competitive i want to find out who's the best what do they do how do they do it basically yeah um i think in vr right now there's there are some player versus player titles but it's very limited and it's they're not it's pretty basic movement like mechanics like just teleporting around there's nothing really cool about it as so i'm i've been waiting for some like 3v3 concept that has you know, actual strategy i got a game for you <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's on uh, it's on oculus thank god because that's what i have are oh you, good. is it a contra strike or are you no to, i'm uh, thinking of um the the one where you're playing basically echo arena? Suck, yeah echo oh arena. that made me sick well, yeah. you know, you got to get past. Issue. You got to yeah. get past that. But I have, I have some takes on that. I, there's um, definitely like, some problems. It's like once with you it. take your and you can. So I'm gonna, I'm <laughs> stop for a second. I'm gonna pause. If 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 you guys have any questions that you that, that you want to give us, you know, feel free uh, <laughs> to to type them in there. Uh, Angelo will, uh, you know, uh, be your voice. And uh, do we, what, what do we have over there? We're all good. Okay, cool, cool. Um, and then so. Uh, let's, let's, we've talked about it. Let's take a look at it. So let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's get in on, on the, the VR. Um, I also think that the, uh, hot wings have also arrived. So, uh, <laughs> oh, here, oh, 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 oh. Okay. oh. That's very ceremonious. <laughs> I was expecting like some like spotlight, some spotlight. nast nast man oh, yeah. in a like a velour coated tabletop thing. I definitely think that these are not the hot wings that we originally had. Did somebody signed just on literally for. order takeout? Yep, yeah, we literally had somebody. No, no, maybe oh, we'll see. It? I don't know. I don't, don't know. Don't, don't look. <laughs> All right, spoilers. So let's. Um, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna transition over. Uh, we're gonna uh, take a look at a uh, light strike array. Uh, we'll do a demo of that, um, and then uh, we're going to do the Hot Wing Challenge uh, uh, Overwatch. So that should be um, fun. So uh, let's uh, let's get into the demo. It's going to take a few minutes to set up. Right? It's going to take a couple minutes. We're going to show you the tr- uh, like the trailer, the trailer yeah. for the for the game. Early access. Uh, this yeah. is early access. You can get it on uh, Steam. Um, and is there any uh, cost associated at now, right uh, now? Right, with... right now, you can get it for twenty five dollars on Steam. Um, I will say it is, it is like I said, it's kind of experimental. Um, it's very much an early access thing. We're still like tweaking things and figuring out what sticks. Um, but uh, it's it's there. Um, we're we're going to be basically uh, working on some ways to sort of improve the matchmaking system that are sort of right around the corner. And so uh, I encourage people to look forward to that and make it all. You you brought a couple of codes I think as well. Yes, so yeah. so we can give away a couple of codes uh, after the demo and um, let's uh, let's take it away with the trailer. Thank you. 
right. Hey, everybody. We're back. Uh, Nighthawk Pro Gaming Lounge. Uh, here we are in uh, Light Strike Array. Uh, we're going to click over here so we can actually switch back and forth uh, between the players. I, I think we have uh, Brett representing hey. Nighthawk Pro Gaming. And we have uh, Drew representing the SF Shock. Uh, so... Uh, and this is not this is not the chicken wing challenge, but this is this is uh, uh, would we say this is the early adopter uh, after hours gaming league challenge uh, if we if we could. Uh, so here so here we are um, with Chris. Chris, uh, let's explain nice. what's going on. Let's uh, let's take a look at the action and uh, we can kind of move around with the camera. So. Uh, yeah, oh, well, even orange, oh. just like the shock. Yeah, <laughs> right on brand. <laughs> Calculated. Wow, that was a uh, that was pretty good. Um, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna move the camera so you can see uh, what's going on over over there with our players. Uh, there we go. Uh, Drew. There we go. There we go. We can see a little bit. Okay, so um, let's go into spectator mode and with the main camera, so we can kind of like get a, a, a bigger okay. view. How do I get an arrow? <laughs> oh, you to pick up Just a pull bow. on the string. So it's pull on the string. Space. Oh, you got to get the bow first. Oh, okay. You gotta get a bow. okay. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, uh, I can jump into it if you want. Yeah, 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 if yeah. You yeah. Want. So, Wait, tell us so. What's so uh, Drew in the orange over here has actually played this game a couple times. His uh, Fanime was the first time that he, he, he got his hands on it. So um, a little unfair advantage we got. Yeah, just here. a little bit. Um, if, the, if this gets too one-sided, I can always... Ooh, <laughs> ooh, that was a little bit dangerous there. So this is... Um, effectively, this is uh, my deathmatch mode. Uh, relatively lightweight. It's meant for one-on-one -on -one play. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, highest kill count within the timer wins sort of mode. Um, be making some tweaks to it in the, in the future, making it like a little bit more... Uh, uh, just a couple little tweaks, but as you can see, um, we've basically got uh, these players called shards, which are these crystalline warriors, um, and they're effectively made from salt and light. Okay. Um, these uh, the balls that you're seeing them throw around are light bombs, just their basic attack weapon. It's kind of like a fireball, but. Uh, one of the tricks with this uh, game is every every tool and weapon in this game has a uniquely physical activation scheme. So you see these light bombs fizzling out, and that's because they're not throwing them hard enough. Um, like I said, we were trying to sort of... Yeah, so, so, so there's a little bit of, uh, of physics with it in, in uh, velocity of the controller that controls... Like how powerful or how fast you're you're lobbing these? Yeah, it's all it's all one to one physics. So you you pull trigger, you make the light bomb, you click the grip button, um, sword, and the moment you let go of it, it'll uh, it'll go as fast as you throw it. But you do need to throw it. You can't just flick it from the wrist. You need to basically give it a nice big no. swing. <laughs> Um, and you'll see there are a few weapons in this level that you can also play around with as well. I like to think of the um, the light bomb as sort of my pistol equivalent. It's sort of your your fundamental basic weapon. It's a little it's a it's a little bit unreliable. Okay. Um, you've oh. got all these other interesting weapons. So this sword is um, one of my trickier weapons. It will one hit KO in melee, but if you sort of give it a big swing and let it drag against the ether, you can make these um, blade beams. Okay. Uh, so yeah. That's Sorry. pretty cool. Sorry. So <laughs> it's it's not easy. It's meant to be a short range. Oh, that was weapon. A, that was a close one there. Yeah, but if I you if you bat those back, you can fireball, also. Fireball. Oh my god! He just he just knocked it back at him. Yeah. So okay. Brett, one of the things you need to realize is if they're fizzling out, you're not throwing them hard enough. Right. Um, you need to really like extend your arm and give it the nice baseball pitch Sweating. if you want it to happen. Yeah. There we go. So nice. part so of let, the, let's flip yeah, let's flip right. views. Let's move over yeah. to him. So just left click. Yeah. Yep, and yep. here and we go. You can do that if you, so, if you don't touch the mask, it'll follow. Yeah, it's up to you. Oh, oh, here we go. Now you got it go. going. Now, so the real Drew, trick Drew's is in trouble. Oh no. The real trick is the follow through. Just one big sweep will uh, will activate it, but you can't just like flick it from the wrist. Did he just jump to another level? Yeah. Yeah. So why don't let me explain the movement mechanic. So uh, this I, I call the movement system Torch Wave, and it's sort of been the result of my quest to look for. Um, a different kind oh, of movement no, system that is zero nausea, but also uh, competitive. Okay. Uh, right now, sort of in VR, and uh, Brett probably knows all about the false dichotomy of um, uh, straight, like free locomotion versus teleport locomotion. Um, 
the uh, sort of the two prevailing styles are you can either point and click and you'll fade to black and teleport somewhere, which is great for accessibility uh, and very, it's not nauseating because there's no acceleration or sliding around, but it's a little bit oh. cheesy in a competitive game because optimal strategy tends to be you just kind of mash the teleport yeah, button to blink around the level ultra okay. fast. The, the other option is to use a more traditional style of locomotion where you use a joystick to slide yourself around the level, um, but at that point, you're the the acceleration induced by sliding around uh, is very nauseating to a certain set of people, and it's I don't, I don't have any hard numbers on it, but I, I've, in my experience, it's kind of been 50-50 as to whether or not so he people... just moved. So he just moved down. Uh, this is a... Uh, this looks like an Obi-Wan-Anakin situation. Looks like <laughs> Drew has the high ground, and you know how you that turns out. It's true. He's, he, if he keeps the pressure up, he should be able to take him out, though. He's uh, Drew is not running up. He's oh, out of time. There we go. Um, so we're going to take a real quick second here to... Oh, to to mention the fact that we're, we do have a prize. Yay! <laughs> we got a, a, a prize giveaway. And uh, right there on the screen, that bit.ly, uh, follow that link. That's going to that's gonna uh, give you a chance to win, you know, a backpack full of uh, uh, NPG swag. So, um, whoa, oh, we lost our we Is lost it uh, going to? Oh, yeah, that's right. The, the, the spectator actually needs to restart the game. So I got that going. Okay. Yeah, I forgot. So we're going to restart. We're going to take a look. That should be quick. Uh, if you have any questions for uh, for Chris about about the game, uh, you know, feel free to ask us uh, those questions. You know, now uh, click on the link uh, for the giveaway. Um, we're going to be giving that away, Angela. When are we doing that today? Uh, uh, during the stream. So during could the stream. Be, uh, could you guys um, could you guys open the menu and uh, ready up for me? Yeah, Just yeah. hold hold menu at the top and then find the the ready button that. Appears and then click it. Uh, Do you see uh, the menu in front of you? No, he killed me before I could click. Oh, okay, uh, wake back up. <laughs> menu, on. what's up? So uh, just ready up. There should be a, pr uh, a pink okay. ready button okay. somewhere around there. Okay, that's one more, and then let me know when you got. Okay, perfect. All right, I'll jump you guys back in. There we go. Good. I got everybody on the right side. Okay. Okay, so that'll. Uh, so back to the action. Yeah. <laughs> So, if we can also do. Also, got free cam as an option as well. So, you can kind of see the scope of the level here. Uh, boom. All right. So, uh, I don't know, did you want me to. Should I jump into the. I, I didn't quite explain the movement system, actually. No, it, it, I think it's. it's, it's let's, let's see how they, they go. So, yeah. I, last round. Oh, is the level. Oh, shoot. Okay. This? this is actually this is actually a, a little bug. Um, I'm going to have to. Uh, yeah, so you guys are actually trapped in spawn because I, uh, I remembered in part why, uh, why I'm not on this build and I'm on a different one right now. So, these guys actually, I've got to. See what the best so, way to do this is. Uh, we're, t we're we're once again we're taking questions uh, on uh, light strike array. Feel free, ask a question, and we'll we'll give you a code. So uh, remember, uh, is is this only compatible with the uh, HTC uh, Vive? Right, for now, yeah. For na for right now. now, I've been targeting so, the Vive, but okay. But ask a question, we'll give you a free code, um, and then let us know what you want to see. Uh, you know, um, you know, maybe we can. Uh, uh, get a little bit more uh, in depth with uh, the developer. So this is your chance to ask questions. So why don't you guys uh, three try questions? To rejoin the first three people. Rejoin okay. the oh, first three people that uh, ask a question are going to get a code. I'm stuck in the uh, yeah. Uh, why don't you so look uh, check land search on the right and find and then join. Uh, what I'll do is I'll leave you guys in the lobby so you can play around with the weapons in this build. There's nothing. Other questions. Nothing. Uh, check. Uh, there we go. It should come up eventually. There it is. Perfect. There we go. Like I said, a bit early access, but... Uh... Yep, and once again, we're taking a look at early access on Light Strike Array, which is a uh, PvP uh, VR. Uh, it's available on Steam as early access, uh, and it's on the H... HTC Vive, yes. yeah, HTC Vive, uh, and and this is oh, cool. This is like <laughs> it's it, it's very gladiatorial in in a, in a way. Yeah, and 
It also, uh, I, I love the fact that the, the, the figures are sort of abstract. Um, it, you know, crystalline. It's got this like game grid sort of Tronish sort of feel too. Yeah. Uh, where uh, I like the fact that you could just like uh, in this this area, you could just grab whatever sort of weapon that that it seems to be available. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it, you know if uh, if you uh, wanted to, you could. You know, there's a spear. It looks like. Uh, you know the 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 light bombs. Ooh. There we go. There we go. We're getting yeah, so bit. I can go over the weapons real quick. So we've got a sort of, they sort of range in technicality. So at any point you can turn your, so you've got this torch, uh, which is used to move. And the basic system is you throw it over an adjacent platform and you phase out a reality until the torch arrives. Um, you can turn a torch into a light bomb at any time by clicking the grip button, which sort of uh, condenses the energy into a projectile. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, but the trick with the light bomb is it'll sort of fizzle out of existence unless you give it... You're holding that backwards, by the way. Um, <laughs> there we go. There you go. Um, is this a laser? Or so is this is the a... rod. So this is a this is a mid-range sniping weapon. And the way it works is you just you hold it with two hands and hold it perfectly still, and it'll charge up. So ah. let go of your torch. I love, I love the melty stick. Yeah, so just hold... Oh. There you go. No. You can actually, it'll, it'll respawn in a little bit. You can actually use the grip button to lock it to your hand so you don't have to use uh, hold trigger. So the reason these are fizzling out is because he's trying to use really quick motions with it. You need to give it sort of a really big swing if you want it to properly activate. And it's consistent once you sort of understand Ooh. that you got to put your body into it. Okay. And uh, as, as you can see, uh, Drew, uh, uh, you know, it like, looks like Drew's flailing away, uh, but... He's actually, yeah, I don't know. I, I have a feeling, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> oh man, these are gonna make some really nice uh, gifts later <laughs> on. Um, oh, there you go. Oh, that whoa. was a really nice swing. Yeah, so the sword's a bit tricky. It's, uh, it'll one hit kill in melee. But, um, yeah. So how many how many players can you have at the same at the at the same time? So it supports up to three v three for now. Oh, that was a nice reflect. Um, the there's actually a couple of game modes in this game. What you saw earlier was a, a deathmatch game mode. Um, going to be making some small tweaks to that, but it's effectively just going to be kind of more like a fighting game where you've got like a limited number of uh, lives and you want to <laughs> take out your opponent before you run out. So so uh, on on the channel, people are uh, saying that the. Uh, uh, the sword swing is 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 kind of like a, a light hood, uh, hadoken. A little bit. It's actually so. I got the inspiration um, from oh. Final Fantasy VII personally. I'm a I'm a huge Final Fantasy nerd myself, um, and I was sort of I like the idea of um, there's actually a couple of games that'll do it. I think Zelda's done it as well, where you can sort of fire light out of the sword, and the the way that works is you just need one broad, clean stroke, and in your in uh, from your perspective, you'll sort of things. see it. Yeah. Paint out as you swing it, and then it'll fly forward. It's kind of like a shotgun almost. Okay. And how many how many players can you you do at the same time? Yeah. So it's up up to three v three, and it's okay. going to depend on the mode. So the there's actually a premier mode which I call Heartbreak, and the way Heartbreak works is it's actually kind of like a it's Ooh. kind of like a hybrid between um, I like to say it's like a hybrid of a MOBA and Ricochet uh, almost in that. You basically have, um, it's kind of mobile like in that there's a heart at either end of the level. Okay. And. Oh, and you're protecting the and heart. And you're protecting the heart. But you can't just walk up and attack it um, because it's protected by a barrier. Okay. To get through the barrier, you need a tool called the sensor. And to unlock the sensor, you need to harvest salt or mine salt. Okay. So the way the game works is each uh, team of three is going to basically, the gate's going to come down. They're going to rush to the middle of the map and look for this uh, this cube. Um, we could actually drop them yeah, into the uh, the Heartbreak game if we wanted, just to sort of get you a sense for the level. Um, yeah. Uh, so so with this, with with VR and, and coming from a idea. from a networking pers perspective, you're moving around a lot of information. Yeah, that's true. And and so that's that's you know once again that's that's where you know uh, our products you know <laughs> sort of come in. Uh, is, is that to have that you need that like stable you know uh, connection and the, one of the the things is like here you're moving like how much information are you yeah. moving so I, I can talk a little bit about so one of the one of the easiest ways to think about this um, 
the uh, VR adds a little bit of a challenge. If you're playing like a, a game like Overwatch, um, let's like like make it some, something super simple. It's, mm -hmm. Let's say you've got just you've got a bunch you've got a gu bunch of people with uh, you know a gun. Uh, each of those players needs to send some information to the server about uh, where they are and which way they're facing. Right. Um, in VR, the problem is actually trickier because not only do you need to communicate Ooh, nice. where uh, your player, meaning the like head, is uh, positioned and rotated, but both hands also need to be sent to the server. Okay. So at, at sort of like a high level, you can think of VR as possibly requiring roughly three times as much data throughput. That's a massive oversimplification. Yeah, but, but that, that totally makes sense because you have three different objects that are in the, the space that you're sending information back and forth uh, to. So that's a lot of information. That's a lot of information. Yeah. That, and, and not only that, yeah. uh, you know, wired and wireless, you know, controllers and, and whatnot. There, there's like a lot of stuff that's, that's happening here. So, so uh, just having consistency and, and, and not having, yep. you know, I'm lag fine. spikes or, or jumps and, and stuff like that is a yeah, big absolutely. concern. Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's, a it's a much bigger concern in VR. Starts. There's all sorts of, like, little tricks that you can do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, watch out. All sorts of uh, <laughs> getting a little bit aggressive with their yeah, play, which is good. Getting, this, this game this, is designed to encourage. Oh, that, that was, was real that was clean. Awesome. Oh, man. So, um, yeah, so this, um, you know, once again out there, you know, uh, sign up for the, the, the giveaway and also... You know, sign up. This is this is pretty killer. So, you know, if you want uh, a free code, you know, uh, send us a shout or a, a question, and uh, we'll definitely. This is your opportunity. So, and this and this the code is. It's not just. Uh, it's not like it's just a beta code. This this code is going to be valid through the full game release. So, so it's as a full we, game as release code, as, as you add add to Chris, it. What's up? Look at the sword. It's got some. Oh, it's it doesn't show up on the server. That's a little artifact. Um, it's a it just kind of stuck in the firing wow. state. I haven't. Uh, She's getting really that. good at knocking those things back. That's yeah. For sure. So this the sword is kind of like a it's a, a kind of a, a master of all trades. You'll notice that because he's holding two swords, he can't move anywhere. Um, and I kind I kind of like to say that Light Strike Array is a fighting game about holding a bunch of things, and you're very much limited to the two hands you've got. And there's actually a sheath on your back. Okay. Oh, that was really Whoa. clean. So. Light bombs get countered pretty hard by the sword, um, but there's a little bit of a weapon triangle in here. The sword has a hard time dealing with the bow. Very, very basic but versatile weapon. Switch to the bow, Brett. Yeah. <laughs> Though I think the last time uh, I played against Drew, I actually Destroy bounced an arrow. I bounced an arrow back at his head, which is extremely difficult. But he, um, I sort of read his timing. He sort of sh started shooting at a, a standard rhythm, and I just bounced it right back. Um, Ooh. So basically, we've got close, mid, and long range. So, that, yeah. so is is Drew? Are, are you moving back and forth between like? That seems to be a pretty good technique. Uh -oh. Yeah, uh -oh. mobility ah. is really important here. <laughs> no, I'm out of energy. I can't move. Punish him while he's uh, while he's oh. low. Oh, oh, so close. <laughs> so, so, uh, so this is pre-alpha, uh, but it, it, it looks awesome. There's Thanks. a lot of cool things that are happening here. Um, besides Steam, um, where else are you, are, are you going to be showing this? Uh, anywhere else? Um, uh, soon? In terms of like platforms, or, um, or like uh, or like, like anime oh, or, yeah, yeah, or yeah. any sort um, of work? Can people? I don't have anything to announce just yet. Um, but what I've been doing is uh, I'm, I'm local to the SF Bay area and I've actually been sort of touring some of the like local uh, fighting game tournaments uh, okay. or like Overwatch tournaments. Um, oh, it's uh, oh, yeah. oh, that was really clean. <laughs> so we'll see when, um, we'll, um, I'll be, I'll be around. Um, but uh, again, I, I have some, I have some, some pretty big uh, events in the works, but um, nothing to formally announce yet. Okay. Well, uh, so, I, I think we're gonna uh, move on to the. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna participate in the uh, Hot Wings yes. challenge as well. Absolutely. So uh, we're gonna do the Hot Wings challenge. What? I'm tracking. What? Uh, oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's that's why you. So so uh, we're gonna we're gonna right. do the Hot Wings challenge on Overwatch. We're going to Overwatch. Uh, coming up next. Woo! And uh, just give us a couple minutes. We gotta just kind of uh, move some things around. Uh, as you know. Uh, this is this is super cool. Ooh, he just uh, faded out. So, um, so 
Uh, once again, Light Strike Array, available yep. on Steam now. Yeah, it's on uh, Steam Early Access. Uh, you can learn more at lsa.gg. Um, and I have a Twitter account as well, uh, at Light Strike VR, because Light Strike Array is 16 characters. Just couldn't quite <laughs> fit it in there. So uh, once again, uh, sign up on the uh, uh, for the Bitly uh, giveaway. And, um, you know, uh, last chance, last call for, for getting uh, some codes. Uh, we're going to close that off uh, by the time we uh, start the Overwatch challenge. But the Overwatch uh, Death Wing Death uh, Match uh, challenge is coming up next. Uh, in the comments, uh, it's, you know, uh, who, who, who do you want to see uh, eat the most uh, hot wings? Uh, is, is it Brett? Is it is it Drew? Is it uh, myself? Is it Chris? Is, is it uh, Josh, uh, who is uh, uh, leading our our captain of our uh, MPG uh, Overwatch team? Uh, that's going to be in the uh, after hours gaming league. Who do you want to see uh, in the most amount of pain? Uh, I, I can't believe I just said that, but uh, <laughs> but uh, put that in the comments, and uh, we'll be right back. Hey everybody, we're back. Uh, so uh, we are at the uh, Overwatch uh, Deathwing Deathmatch Challenge. Uh, we're gonna kind of move the camera around so you can see. Hi, this is Ben. Uh, Brett is uh, to my right. So uh, go ahead and tilt. There we go. Uh, Josh is setting up. Uh, Chris is going to be playing over uh, there, and uh, and then we also have uh, Drew uh, way in the, on the other side. Uh, and it, are, Drew, are you uh, MPG Eagle or Falcon? I'm Falcon. All right. So Drew is Falcon. Chris is going to be Eagle. Uh, Brett is Brett Spot, and uh, I am uh, Zardu Ben. So. Uh, whenever we're ready, I guess cool. we'll, yeah, uh, set up, set up. Well, we'll go. Yep. So the big question is: is what is everybody going to be playing? Are they going to go for the the Roadhog self uh, healing uh, off tank? Are you going to go for some uh, damage? Or are we going to see a widow somewhere in here? Um, <laughs> it, let, let us know what your guys' uh, thoughts are, uh, and uh, I, I think uh, I, I think you're going to actually be seeing my gameplay, which is really going to be embarrassing. But uh, all right, all right, let's do this. Let's do it. This is entering game for the stomach ache. <laughs> we should have thought about like brought to you by Pepto Bismol, but <laughs> but uh, here we go. Oh, the market. So, uh, let's see. <laughs> All right, and this is a five minute game, is that correct? So, here we go. Oh, there's a. It's already a ninja. Oh, I know who the di I I know who the uh, diva is. That's for sure. Oh, I'm about to. <laughs> No. no. <laughs> Missed with that hook. Uh, I'm in yeah. so much trouble. One minute down, Brett's already in the lead. Oh, 
question is, where is Drew? Oh no. Oh! No, we do not want to be there. This is not good. Ooh. Let's see. Alright, I'm switching it up a little bit. Good with Diva's gun. All right. All right. All right. So let's a little doom fist action. Holy cow! All right. Get in the game here. Where are you guys? Damn it. I feel like my... Oh, come on, come on. Oh, no, the alt tab, the alt tab! <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> oh! Oh no, double teamed. I'm not a young man anymore. I was no health. Oh no. I'm getting owned. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Uh. What are we looking at the score? I am like way, way behind. It's, it's gonna, it's looking like a bunch of, uh, a bunch of wings for me. That's for sure. For, okay, so who's in on the next one? Okay, so who, uh, Good luck, sirs. <laughs> who's Falcon. Oh, Drew's yep. Second. Yeah. Okay. And then Chris? Is that I'm evil. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, Looks like I am. Back to I am in the. Uh, yes. um, So what did you guys think of that first round? I totally got cleaned. I, um, uh, I found my sensitivity settings eventually. Yeah, I, I, I think that was part of my problem. Um, let's see what other excuses uh, I can make. Uh, okay, so let me uh, go into my options here. Uh, controls. Uh, sensitivity is like super low. Yo, pointer precision is on. So we can just like drill it down to three. 
Okay, so uh, who is in? So I stop here, but yeah. Brett had to leave. So okay. it'll just be three. Uh, there's well, we've got four. Who's gonna be the fourth? Huh? Who will be the fourth? They have to eat a wing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you got a group. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, Chris, All right. You're, uh, you're safe. You don't have to eat anything. Oh, okay. So this, this is like now internal, but I guess got now. It. You're here. <laughs> <laughs> is what it is. What is this? All right. Okay. So, so uh, good. I turned the sensitivity way down and turned off mouse acceleration. Okay. All right. So second. sorry for the confusion, <laughs> everybody. We're trying to figure out. So um, we just have to drop Brett out. So just have him so, take put right. out of. Nah, sure. Someone can fly this account. That's fine. <laughs> all right. All right. Cool. Cool. It's okay. I'm young. It's okay. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Once again, uh, the Bitly uh, Twitch uh, giveaway. Uh, remember to to if you want that swag pack, uh, you know, click on that link. And uh, here we go. All right. Are we ready to go for round two? All right. All right. Starting. Starting now. Oh, oh, oh yeah, and uh, so a couple of our players here are, are going to be players with the uh, uh, After Hours Gaming League, um, and uh, so I'm going to switch it up. Uh, I think I got owned the first round, so uh, I'm going to switch it up and play. No, nobody else can see my screen, so only you guys can. Uh, so I'm going to play a sniper. Oh, wait. Damn it. And I'll just by saying, saying this, uh, uh, everything, everything about, about this challenge, challenge stack 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 gives me one, one a spicy, spicy food, food. Number, two, number two, I'm a main support, support player, which means I have no mechanical skill whatsoever, whatsoever so this is going to be interesting. Yeah. yeah. This is like, like a hazing like like of the Dow Cowboy going on here. Oh, 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 oh. I definitely have to turn up my sensitivity. Because, what in the hell? All right, sensitivity is going up because man, I'm just not getting any. There we go. Ah, we'll roll out the day. Yeet, yeet. <laughs> Come on, play main support. Yeah, sorry, yes, 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 yes. Couple, oh, how would you get to the ulti so fast? <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Ah. All these assists, I need kills. There we go. Much better. Oh. All right. Back in the game. God. Oh, 
I still have no kills. I've just got nothing but assists. God. Hey, you roll out with the May, okay? That's only fair. Oh, <laughs> oh come on! Are you serious? Ah. Oh. Still got. Uh, well, I'm hey, the king of the. I'm, in, I'm, in I'm king of the assists right now. Hey Ben, there's a sad truth. Assists don't matter. I know. <laughs> I'm like wing. I'm gonna be wing stop here in a minute. Hey, I'm getting a free lunch out of this. I'm thankful. <laughs> come on, one kill. Just come on. Ah. Slug match in here. Oh no. Oh. Someone else run out with a bastion? Oh, God. Oh, Did that just happen? Did that just happen? Yes. Oh, that's not me for the player game. Freaking All right. Dude. <laughs> Even in 1v1s, man. <laughs> Uh, so our winner is uh, Drew. Oh no, uh, no, it's uh, sorry, it's uh, Josh. So Josh, Drew, and uh, uh, so now uh, that's looks like I'm on the bottom. Garrett's next. <laughs> so let let that sink in for a second. The main support player out DPS the DPS. I had a terrible game. I'm just going to say, like, it, it takes me at least 32 games to get warmed up. Um, nothing you can do I got nothing but excuses at this time. time. <laughs> I know. I got nothing but excuses. That was pretty pathetic. I like excuses. I'm sorry, buddy. It was. I was, you know. So what do you guys, what do you guys think? Who, who, who should, uh, besides me, who, who should also have, have, uh, uh, uh some wings? Well, uh. What, we'll leave it open for a second, huh? What, what was the order of a? Uh... So the order was so Brett left, so technically, he forfeited. So, so um, he should get the most wings. He should get the most wings. Uh... But then I'm next. I I didn't get a, a, a one kill, so that's pretty embarrassing. So, what, what's worse, got... guys, forfeiture or getting zero yeah. kills as a DPS oh, no. player? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Uh... Oh, we went off. No. Oh, okay. So, um, let's see. Where are we? we gotta what do we got? We gotta switch the wing. No boosting. Uh, okay, so let's... Uh, we're doing an ad right now, apparently. Um, let's switch to the couch, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll do this wing thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think you found your name. All right, we'll do the thing. <laughs> All right. We'll see you in a minute. All right, we're back. Um, spicy wing challenge. As you know, I came in uh, first, and so I, I won't have to uh, do any of the spicy wings. No, that's, uh, you saw that pathetic performance. Uh, I, I think that uh, I came in last place. Uh, Garrett, unfortunately, it's like also in, in, in low. Um, let's okay. just go around and just uh, introduce everybody again. I'm Ben. Uh, I'm the uh, brand experience manager for Nighthawk Pro Gaming. Hi, um, Garrett, the intern, and um, yeah, I'm playing <laughs> the Nighthawk Pro Gaming team, um, flex support. Yeah, in the back we've got. Hey guys, I'm Josh. I'm digital production manager here at Nectar, leading global web marketing. I'm also the main support and team captain for the Nectar Nighthawks. Hey, this is Drew. I'm with the SF Shock. I run the marketing and the events. 
I'm Chris. I'm an indie developer on Light Strike Array, part of an unwieldy systems and casual Genji main. <laughs> so one last, uh, uh, this is your last chance. Uh, we're going we're gonna to take the link down after this. But uh, bit.ly link that's on uh, the stream, that uh, you're going to win, uh, with the, well, you're going to win a, a prize pack, including a backpack, a water bottle, mug, and a Nighthawk Pro Gaming hat. Um, so what's your strategy with, uh, with this? Just, just take it in one swoop. How, how many, how many, we, how many are we doing, Angelo? How, how many do we have to do? Gets three. I get two. Okay. We're oh, going to do two okay. and one. Oh, this is going to be super easy. <laughs> All right. So you gotta shoot the ranch. That's the secret. Yeah. <laughs> and they're from oh, out of the So there's a lot of thoughts and a lot of, a lot of strategies <laughs> when it comes to, uh, eating hot wings. Uh, you definitely, I, I think I'm going to go. I think I'm gonna go for drumstick. Drumstick. I think I'm gonna go for the drumstick. I don't know about you guys, but I think the drumstick it's a little bit easier than the the, the wing part. So, all right. Well, well, I'm gonna go hardcore. Then I'm gonna go for the wing. Just, we'll go for <laughs> that. If you like the challenge, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> all right. It's quite juicy. It is a little juicy. It is a little spicy. Yeah. And the thing is, is I think it's one of these hidden spices where it's like. Oh. <laughs> Where? Oh wow! That's oh yeah, that's there it goes. Have, so to make it easy on us, it, it, it's got it's got a. Uh, uh, I will say the sauce has like a three, maybe four second delay. So, um, all right, here we go. All right, brace for impact. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <that> spicy. <laughs> you gotta eat them quick, man. <laughs> Actually, no, eat them slow so I can enjoy this. I can enjoy the fact that I won that, won that round. Oh, man. It, yeah, it's like, it's like a sneaky spice. Mm -hmm. I think. Oh. Yeah, it's like a, like, at first you're like, oh, no, this is total. Yeah, see, right there. Oh, man, okay. In. Yeah, at first I'm like, oh, this is easy. And then, no, no, I'm, I'm starting to feel it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, guys, mm. I actually love smoke eaters. I go there on a weekly basis, but this is one of the rare times I'm so glad I'm actually not eating smoke eaters oh, for that, a meal. Mm. <laughs> I'd rather man. starve than do this. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. For that. Round one. Should we get a spoon for the sauce? You guys can oh, that, we can yeah, just yeah, like drink that. Yeah. All right. No, that should be for bread. I, I, I want to <laughs> go on record to say that I did not take any of the uh, blue cheese on that one. Hey, well, we still got one more. Day. One more. Oh, it's it. <laughs> so, uh, yes, one more. <laughs> <laughs> all right, get one all the way at the bottom. <laughs> just, just, all right. No, you should swirl I mean, it up. That's the penalty. <laughs> Here um, we go. Oh, he flipped it. He flipped it. I flipped oh. it. It's aggressive. Yeah, yeah, soak it in that sauce. Double dipping. I'm doing the double dip. <laughs> oh. oh, crap. <laughs> Deep breath. Yep. Here we go. You do you have paramedics on standby. It's gonna take a half second. Yeah. <laughs> You're better at eating wings than playing over Ow, that's cold. <laughs> that's some cold. So, I'm going to be playing a lot of Overwatch over the next uh, couple weeks. Sorry, We're going to do know. another one of these challenges. We're going to make sure... We're going to make sure that you're in this. It's going to be set up just a little bit. Yeah, I, I think uh, next time I will I will be highly focused. You got to do the saltine challenge when you have to eat like 30 saltine crackers with no water. Right. Oh. And, it's, and it's a speed race. That's well, <laughs> you can't tell if you're laughing or suffering. <laughs> a little of both. <laughs> oh no, you have to eat. Uh, you like a champ. I think you have to eat like ten saltines, and the first person to whistle wins. That's what oh. it is. What? Yeah. And, uh -huh. uh, technical. I like it. Yeah. Very technical. Oh, oh man, please. save that for the books. Just hydrate before you do the challenge. <laughs> All right, nice wing job. number two done. We still have a bunch left. That's all for Brett, probably. Well, <laughs> man. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely a little bit on the spicy tip. Um, <laughs> you know, I should pass me like a celery with the sauce dip. I'll suffer with you guys. That's a. I got. I got a sacrifice. Oh, just lather it on there, man. <laughs> just yeah. Well, don't do that. No mercy. <laughs> all right, here we go. Lead by example. Um, actually, not bad. I, I, I mean, it, it's a spice. It comes in a little bit, a little bit late. But um, all right, 
I'm gonna do one more for the, for for all of you watching out there. So, because <laughs> um, I'm I'm a good sport, and uh, and I, I, let's just see how this goes. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks, uh, Drew, coming out from from the shock, telling us about what's going on, and uh, thanks, Chris. Thanks for that awesome demo, uh, Brett. Uh, who uh, had to leave, but uh, thanks to him. Uh, Garrett, thanks for uh, being a champ and just sucking it up with the wings. <laughs> um, Josh, no thanks. <laughs> and, <laughs> no, thanks for, thanks for coming in. Uh, Will, Angelo, everybody uh, you know behind the scenes that, that makes this happen, that we can make this happen for you guys. Uh, remember, uh, Nighthawk Pro Gaming, check it out. Uh, like this... Uh, you know what, what? What puts us here to help you guys is is really the router. Uh, it's it's amazing. Check it out. There's there's so many features to it. Um, I'm not going to say that it helped my Overwatch game, but um, but it's um, it's done a lot to help like reduce my my pain, increase my uh, my gaming experience. I I could only really play badly one character. Now I can play badly like 10 or 15 characters. So, uh, so thanks everybody. Uh, I'm going to do one more wing and I think we're out of here then. Yeah. And also we're, uh, we're looking for micro influencers and advocates. Uh, you guys that, you know, I know, uh, Iron Eagle, you're out there and, uh, you just love the product. So, uh, we're looking for advocates and, uh, uh, you know, people that have it, that, that love it, tell us about your experience. Uh, go to, uh, we're dropping the link uh, down below. Is that what we're doing, Angela? Yes. So we're dropping the link down below. Uh, get a hold of us, uh, and you can have an opportunity to get a, a swag pack or some cool stuff and some inside information. Uh, we would love for you to, to, to help us get the word out um, about this awesome product. And uh, with that, I'm going to do this last wing, and uh, peace. We'll see you. When, are, when is the next one? We're uh, Like two weeks? Two weeks, we're going to have uh, Cryptic uh, come out, and they're going to talk about um, Star Trek Online. So they've got a big DLC that's coming for that. So stay tuned for that. And, uh, you know, if you have any suggestions or ideas for challenges uh, that do not involve super hot, spicy foods, maybe they do. Uh, you know, let us know as well. Follow us on uh, Twitch, follow us on Twitter, uh, Facebook, wherever you can find us, Instagram. Uh, I know that's where, you know, I think maybe we have a tribe or a Friendster account too. So, all right, <laughs> let's <space>. do this. <laughs> all right, thanks everybody. We'll see you later. Cool. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs>